You're watching Drake Queen Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey guys and gals, Nary here from Drake Queen Gaming. So you me on Twitter, the Gaming Drag. Today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Echo. So, TJ's path. So yeah, let's go ahead and just jump right back in. Alarm chain, you are up. And let's go. Poor TJ was outside the freaking mine. Creepy. It looked like you were passed out or something. TJ finally seems to focus on us. The day he's looking at his eyes dis disappearing. Passed out? Oh, no! I was just taking a quick nap. <laughs> TJ lets out a short laugh and leans his head back against his backpack. What? Here? What? Here? I look back at the sealed mine, the ominous blackness still seeming to yawn open at us. Why? Well, it's hotter than usual today, so I just started to feel like I'm gonna, I was going to pass out. I thought that might be a bad sign, so I decided to rest once I got here. You came here on purpose? Yeah, I saw the canyon that we kind of saw the canyon with you last time, so I decided to take a trip to the mine this time. TJ smiles lazily up at me as he continues to lounge against his backpack. Sorry, I waited. Sorry, I worried you. And oh, Julian! TJ seems to suddenly realize that the stag is here. But what are you doing here? TJ quickly gets to his feet, sliding his arms out of the straps of his backpack. He hugs Julian, the stag hugging back just as enthusiastically. TJ doesn't even greet me, so TJ just TJ doesn't even greet me so intimately. I guess they have more of a history than I thought. Hey! Hey, Tej! Uh, yeah, I, I just met Chase, uh, I met Chase at the diner. You weren't answering our text, so we both decided to come up and find you. That and Chase needs to get some footage for his project. Oh, cool. Do you need help with that, Chase? TJ turns to me with a grin. I don't know what it is, but TJ's acting a lot more chipper than he was yesterday. That almost dark broodiness is gone, replaced by his usual cheer. I have to smile because of it, despite the situation just a few minutes ago. Sure. Another breeze of cool air seems to whoosh, seems to whoosh softly through the rebar. I look back at it. TJ, why the hell would you sleep here next to the creepy mine? TJ frowns. It was really cool. Like, cold. I was laying in the opening and it felt some cool air blow out, so I decided to lean against it. It feels really nice. TJ walks up to the metal grid and spreads his arms out, clutching under the bars as he presses his face against it. Ah. <laughs> he leans his head back, pulling a face. Well, it smells really musty, but it feels good. Hmm. Look back at the opening. The blackness inside sitting chills up my spine. I think back to when a body was found in there over a hundred years ago. Even though I know there aren't any dead bodies in there now, it still creeps me the fuck out. I try to hide my I try to hide my shudder as I turn away, looking back at the truck. Hey, so are we going to Sydney's old house now? Is that why you guys came to find me? CJ's trying CJ's trying to hide it, but I can hear the eagerness in his voice. I turn back to look at him. He winks now with his back to mine, pressed up against it. I want to tell him to move away from the opening. But I won't be able to explain to explain to him why. Let well, let me get some filming done first. I can do the voiceover later. It'll be quick. I hold back a wince as I realize how much time that's also going to take. Our project is going to be shit at this point. Can't avoid that. I just need to make it at least. I need to make it the least shit that I can. Oh yeah, sorry. <laughs> TJ laughs nervously then looks away. Sorry, I'm just a little loopy from my nap. You guys really surprised me. It's okay. I'm gonna go get my equipment. Really, really quick, alright? TJ nods at me and I jog off to the parked truck grab, grab, to grab my camera. So TJ might still be acting a little weird, but I'm just glad he seems happy again. Seeing him the way he was last night was a little unnerving to say the least. I scoop up my camera back from the bed of the truck and head back, slowing down to walk as the heat of his heat is already starting to catch up with me. TJ was able to go on several hour-long hike as absurd to me. It almost seems foolish. Especially for someone like TJ, who knows about how, who knows about how dangerous that can be. When I get back to the mine entrance, I'll see Julian and TJ sitting with their backs to either side of the opening, chatting with each other. They're eating granola bars, and TJ holds one out to me as I approach. Thanks! Hey, TJ! Huh? TJ looks up at me innocently. If you go on a hike again, be sure to bring me next time, okay? I don't think you, I don't think you should be alone out here. Oh, yeah, I'm sure. His ears droop a little, a small frown on his face. I just don't want you to get hurt, you know? It's really hot today, so... And it would have been really terrible if you passed out alone. Yeah, sorry. I drop my bag gently on the ground before leaning before leaning back against a wall next to the links. It's all good. I just want to make sure you're okay. <laughs> thanks. I just didn't want to wake you up this morning. Hey, Jenna offered to go with you, didn't she? She just sighs quietly, looking away into mine. Mine. Yeah, but I can tell you guys I don't want to go. I just, 
I can't tell you guys I don't want to. You guys don't want to go. I just don't want to ruin this trip for you more than I already have. What? TJ, what are you talking about? TJ goes quiet and just shrugs his shoulders. Maybe he isn't back to his old self after all. I wouldn't mind tagging along with you. T going along with you, TJ. I love hiking. Julian smiles gently at the links. For some reason, I feel a tiny tug of annoyance in my chest. It's stupid, but I was the one who offered first, and I'm the one that took TJ out here the, out the first time. Yeah, we could we could do we could both go. Uh, the point is, you don't go out alone next time, all right, Tej? Yeah, okay. Thanks, guys. No problem. A short silence stretches a, stretches out between the three of us before Julian speaks up again. We were just talking about our old Bible study group. Ah. Uh -huh. Tej leans his head back against the wall, rolling his eyes. It's an expression I don't see him or see from him very often. What about it? Oh, just the way that TJ would always take it so seriously, and no one else would. <laughs> TJ shakes his head in exasperation. Yeah, I never had any control in that club. Oh, really? Were you in charge? It's a little odd to think of TJ in a leadership position like that. I just never knew him. Ever just never knew him to put himself out there in high school. Yeah, I revived it after I sort of went defunct for a few years. I was not that popular. TJ smiles with some embarrassment. Yeah, we had like three other members, not including you or me. Yeah, then one dropped out after, like, two meetings? Julian clicks his tongue. What a godless school we went to! Hey! You know I'm kidding, mostly. Well, I did want atheists to join, too, as long as they weren't disruptive. I just wanted to show everyone what a nice experience it could be, even if you didn't believe. I very vaguely remember TJ inviting me to the book club and, and me saying that I'd think about it. I never went, of course. It wasn't all that spiritual in the end, though. Yeah, most, we mostly just talked, just talked and brought snacks, it took TJ a while to realize no one wanted another Sunday school session at actual school. Yep, hours of planning out the window. It was still a great time. I think the four of us were happier for it. Yeah, I guess. Hmm, TJ seems to suddenly notice me. Ah, uh, sorry. Ah, uh, sorry, Chase. You wouldn't know much about this stuff. It's okay. It's interesting to hear about. Again, I get that little twinge of jealousy, even though I know it's not fair. I chose not to show up. Probably using that time to go home and hang out with Leo. You didn't miss much. Just discussions about movies and watching movies, too. Uh, they, uh, they couldn't even be religiously themed. Thank God. Hey! I laugh at how indignant TJ is. Well, I'm glad you had a good time, at least. I came away thinking the whole thing was a failure. I think I remember you mentioning that you wished your friend would have, your friend here would have shown up. Um, I don't really remember. Of course you do. You said it all the time. TJ's ears flat and turn red. Who? Me? Yep. Julian grins as TJ tries to look away. Well, the situation is kind of funny. Now I feel even worse about not ever showing up. <sighs> Sorry, Tease. You know, it was high school and all. Yeah, I understand. I don't worry about it. You did... So did you start another club at your new school? TJ smirks. It's a Christian school, so there's like 50 clubs about religion. Oh, are you a member of any of them? Um, a few. Oh, which ones? Uh, a singles club. Singles? As in finding a date? Mm, sure. He looks away again. It's hilarious how bashful he is about this stuff. He's in college. All this should be natural to talk about, but not to TJ. You meet anyone? Hey, Chase, don't you have to film some stuff? He looks back at me with a frown. Whoa, just asking. Zillion asks, chuckles quietly. I bend down and start pulling up my equipment, deciding that, that a few long shots of the tripod, tripod should be enough. Tripod. Jesus. As we're sitting at the lake, TJ Julia asks TJ about the hike. Was it fun? TJ shrugs, finishing the last of his granola bar and brushing his paws together to get rid of the crumbs. <clears throat> it was okay. It was really quiet. I once as one of my pads gets pinched between the metal. Kind of creepy, to be honest. I would like it if you two went along sometime, if I do it again. Of course. Yeah, definitely. Over the next 20 minutes, I set up the camera in three different spots, getting one minute of film for each. TJ and Julian sit in the truck while I do, and whenever I glance at them, they seem to be anima animatedly chatting and laughing. Once I'm done, I sigh and quickly snap the legs back down into the bag along with the camera. I see my I see my to-go box in the dirt and consider picking it up, but I don't. I drop the bag into the truck again before hopping into the passenger seat, leaving TJ to sit between the two of us. They go quiet as we start pulling out onto the dirt road. What were you guys talking about? Not much. Just about high school. TJ nods. Again, I'm starting to feel a little left out between these two. Kind of like a third wheel. So, what's the plan now? 
Well, we thought we'd go to the house now, after, after we pick up Jenna and Carl. All right. We drive in silence a little while, and for some reason I start to wish that I was sitting in the middle. The way Jillian keeps turning the wheel forces his elbow to brush up against TJ's side, and I force myself to look away, wondering what the fuck I'm thinking. I'm treating TJ like he's something that belongs to me. We've only hung out recently over the course of this week. I've barely, I've barely talked to him over the, him the past two years. I force myself to not look ahead, to look ahead out the windshield. Mm. Then TJ's phone buzzes, and my eyes naturally go to the screen as the Lynx whips it out. I see the name Flynn and then the message underneath it. I only have time to see a few words. You know his fucking tell me! TJ jerks his phone back down, and I look away just as I feel the Lynx's eyes on my face. I wonder if he saw me looking. I'm sure he did. It doesn't really matter, though, because now I'm wondering what the fuck Flynn thinks he's doing. Say that again. Jesus. Oof. They've been staying away from each other the past few days, obviously, but I guess Flynn found another way to get to TJ. What the fuck does he think he's doing? I feel myself getting angry. I don't exactly know why th what that lizard is saying to TJ, but judging by, by what I saw, it's definitely not good. I make a mental note to ask TJ about it tonight. If he won't tell me, then I'll let Leo know. He'll do something about it. We all walk up the sidewalk to the old ranch-style house. It's been a long, long time since I've seen this place. Even longer since, I walked, since I've walked on this path. Sydney's house is up the gravel road behind the forest. It's a, bit of, it's a bit of an odd spot, secluded from the rest of the town. It was all the better for us, I guess. It's nice not to be reminded of what happened. Guys, I don't know about this. You think he's just going to let us in? What else can we do? Uh, maybe Sydney didn't mean his room. Where else would he sleep? Uh, I don't know. I mean, he'd nap in random places, if I remember right. Like, he slept on my couch, even. Stop it, Chase. You know that's not what he meant. Well, who knows? I do. I know where it is. That dark edge of TJ's voice is creeping in again. I suppose there's no harm in asking. You can't deny that it's a little weird for five young adults to just show up on your door at step asking to be let in. We didn't have much of a choice, though, did we? TJ is walking ahead of all of us, marching up the concrete steps without hesitation before immediately ringing the bell. Whoa, wait, 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 we didn't even think what we were going to say. I already know what I'm going to say. We stand there in stunned silence for a bit and look around at the others. Carl looks completely uncomfortable, almost nauseous, his paws shoved deep into his pockets as he stares hard at the ground. Jenna is staring at TJ, her brow furrowed, clearly worried. Julian stands there as if the situation doesn't bother him at all. The foot door finally opens, revealing a young red panda, not much older than ourselves. He blinks at us and fixes a smile on his face. Hello, how can I help you? I see TJ's ears flatten down for a moment, his originally tough resolve clearly faltering. Um, hello. The red panda stares down at TJ for a moment, waiting expectantly. I don't recognize him, and I'm sure I would have seen him around town if he'd moved in after City's parents moved out. It must have been sometime recently, a few years ago. I decided then that I should step in and let TJ try and gather his wits. Hi, I'm Chase, and this is TJ, and Carl, Jenna, and Julian. I point to everyone, feeling my cheeks grow hot. Hi, everyone. Oh, hi, everyone. Um, I'm Angie. Another, another, moment, awkward, another moment of awkward silence before I try to think of something else to say. How the hell do you bring up? How the hell do you bring up wanting to search someone's else, someone's house when it because it belonged to your dead friend? As I'm trying to figure that out, TJ speaks up again. My, uh, our friend used to live here about twelve years ago. Oh really? The panda seems to think. Are you talking about Cindy? Sydney, yeah, he was our friend. Oh, sorry, I couldn't remember his na the name. I think his aunt told me about what happened. Yes, and uh, he left something behind for us in his room. Is that all right if we come in and look for it? Angie's originally inquisitive look is replaced by one of confusion and definitely a little bit of suspicion. Oh, uh, all of you. I notice Carl still staring down hard at the floor, his paws twisting in his pockets. If that's all right with you. Angie stares at us all for a good ten seconds, causing even me to glance down at the floor, realizing how stupid all this is. Finally, he starts to step back, closing the door a little bit as he does. Um, I'm sorry, I don't think that's a good idea. Wait! She just says forward, his fur bristling. The panda jumps a little, closing the door further until it's at the point where I can only see one of his eyes. So, sorry, it's just, maybe I could come in and, and the rest of my friends can wait outside? This will be really quick. I know exactly where to look. The panda's one eye looks back at us. As he turns around and makes a shooing gesture with his, both his paws. There's a pause, but we... There's both of his paws. There's a pause. Then we stumble back a little, down the steps onto the sidewalk. My face burns again in embarrassment, 
realizing what a bunch of crazy people we look like right now. I look back and see TJ standing alone on the porch, looking back at the panda, his paws clasped together. Again, what feels like a very long silence seems to drag on until... Angie opens the door slightly. You know what? Why don't you just tell me where it is and I'll have a look. Oh, oh yeah, um... TJ seems surprised, as if only now considering that idea. It's in... it's the room on the left, down, by, down that hallway. time is it? Okay. TJ points at the door at an angle. In the closet, in the back corner. It might be a... it might be in a box. Angie's facial expressions mirrors mine as I frown. A box in a closet, sitting there for over a decade. All right, I'll have a look. Angie disappears behind the door, and I hear a deadbolt slide into place. We stand there in silence for a little while before Carl breaks it. Dude, he's calling the police! No, he's not. We, we look like a bunch of crazy people. We should leave. Not until he comes back out. I think I'm going to be sick. I think it's technically okay unless he tells us to leave. He did say he's going to look for it. No harm in just waiting for his answer. I see Carl scuff his hooves against the pavement, looking around nervously. I wonder if he's had too much weed or something. Why do you think it's the closet? He used to, he used a shoebox in there as, uh, as a spot for the treasure hunts before. You remember. I vaguely do, now that he mentions it, but I'm surprised TJ does. He was even younger. Then the door opens and Angie comes back out. His facial expression is completely different now. It's one of am amazement and disbelief. But it's what his paws but it's what's in his paws that catches my attention. It's a teal colored shoebox, old and worn and torn through the corners. My mouth drops. Angie stands there for a moment, holding the box out. Is this it? It's not mine, and there's a piece of paper inside. TJ's paws shake as he reaches out to take the box, lifting the lid to look inside. It was in the spot that you said. I've never seen that before. I feel my stomach twist, more dismayed than anything that he found something. Do you not use that closet? It's a bit of an odd question, but I want to know how the hell he might have missed it. Angie shakes his head. No, not really. It's mostly a storage room. It's mostly a storage room right now. I think I've opened it a few times, uh, put some boxes on the shelf, but I can't really remember. Did you not look inside when you first moved in? Angie looks at me, and so does TJ over his shoulder. I guess now I'm sounding like a crazy person. Well, I can't really remember. It was a couple years ago. I had a family help me move in then, so maybe they just thought it was mine if they saw it. I want to ask him more, but I bite my lip, not wanting to seem as frustrated and suspicious as I am. It's definitely something I could have missed. I've found a few things in the crawl space from the last family. Who lived here before you, if you don't mind me asking? Angie leans against the doorway, his arm folded, looking a bit more relaxed now. It was the family you're talking about. It was the family you're talking about, I think. Uh, the Bronsons? Yes. JJ's still looking down at the box. <coughs> Having not taken out the note. Alright, I'm gonna go ahead and pause it right here. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell. Leave a super thanks or a tip if you can, it always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!